Hi, so I just wanted to address exactly what does PredBat do and how does it actually work because people aren't really sure about that and maybe it's not very well documented. I'm not going to go into details of configurations or anything today, this is more just a, an overview. So the idea is that it's a simulation tool that actually simulates how your home battery and solar will perform. So I've built a model which um, takes data um, from obviously from GiveTCP, um, either through the Home Assistant entities or it can talk directly to the REST interface and bypass a bit of that sort of gubbins in between and make it a bit faster. But either way, it takes that information so it can knows things like your current battery level and what the charging slots are set to and your your inverter um, uh, power and things like that. Um, and then it uses historical data from GiveTCP. So this is the data that's actually kept on your load. Um, you know, how much energy you've actually used in the past and other historical data like how much you've charged your car. Um, because car charging is a bit unpredictable, you essentially want to subtract it from the previous load data so that you know what the house is going to use and then you add the, predict the plan for the car charging back on top of that. <coughs> And then it uses Solcast, and Solcast is a great solar prediction tool that gives you half hour data on your predictions. And if you've configured your home array correctly, then you get a fairly good correlation between Solcast and the actuals. And you can kind of see that in your energy tab here as well. You can see I'm performing pretty much according to the line, a little bit down this hour, a little bit up at this hour. Well, that's how it works, passing clouds and all the rest of it. Um, so it can run a simulation and predict the outcomes. Um, so what do you do with that then? So some of the tools have a sort of a, <coughs> a hardwired algorithm to say things like, well, if I've got a cheap night rate, then figure out how much to charge at night so that I don't run out of battery in the day. That's kind of simplistic. Um, what I've tried to do with, um, uh, with, with PredBat is to essentially instead of actually hardwiring algorithms just try lots of combinations and find out which gives you the best cost so it's about cost optimization and you can see these charts here about the home cost prediction and this is what it's optimizing so base um, is essentially what will happen if it doesn't do anything as the reverter is currently set up and what's happening how much it's going to cost and so you, if you know, you can toggle these and have a look, and you can see this is the base cost. Um, and so I'm going to spend a certain amount of money charging overnight because I think I've, the charging's enabled, so that's going to be the default. And then um, a bit of export here, and a certain amount of charging turning on. Best is essentially the best combination of charging and discharging that Predback can find that will give you the cheapest outcome. And in my case, you can see best is somewhat cheaper. <coughs> Then there's some other scenarios that it also optimizes for. So best 10 is similar to best, but rather than using the sort of the 50% mark and sole cast, that's kind of what's most likely to happen. It uses the 10% line in sole cast, which is the sort of the most pessimistic forecast, almost like well, one in 10 times it'll turn out this bad. And so you can see that somewhere in between on the cost wise. And you'll see these same lines on the battery prediction charts as well. So you, you'll see the baseline if it doesn't do anything. The best here, this is what it's decided to do. And then the best 10, well, if it turns out the weather's a bit worse, then it's not that much different in this case. Sometimes there's a big difference between best and best 10. And that's why you have a weighting on best 10 that says how much you're going to skew my results because, you know, Let's just say the difference here, I could save 10p by not charging as much, but in the 10% scenario, it would cost me five pounds. Is that a particularly good trade-off? If that's gonna happen one in 10 times, then on average, it's gonna cost me 50p, so it's not. So you can tune exactly your um, level of risk, so to speak, between the two. Um, so, so what happens with the simulation is it obviously runs the base simulation and then it runs a simulation starting off 
it, it picks the charging slots um, which are essentially based on um, a threshold so you can see my energy rates just go up and down because I'm unintelligent so I've got a threshold set um, and that's going to be my um, uh, my low rate threshold here 0 0.85 so if the rates drop 15% below the average rate that's not low below the highest below the average then it's considered low rate and that threshold is there mainly so you don't have to calculate every single time period throughout the day so um, Revat's going to pick these times and go this is potential charging slot and then what it's going to do is it starts off by assuming it's going to charge fully on those slots and then if you've got any discharge slots and the discharge slot is um, depends on the threshold here I've got my threshold set to 1.0 so every time is a potential discharge slot here it will actually walk through all the discharge slots and figure out and, and try each combination of discharge and see whether they make the, it cheaper or more expensive. Then when it's finished with all the discharges, it will then go to the charge slots and it will try reducing the charge level on each charge slot as much as it can until it gets more expensive and then it will stop reducing it. Now because I've got 7.5p night rate and um, and I've got a, an export rate in the day that's higher than that, I'm ending up charging 100% every time. I've not told it to do that, it's just worked that out. These discharge slots here, I've actually got on this new feature called export hold, um, sorry, export freeze, which essentially means that rather than discharging forcefully, it just stops charging the battery and lets it export to the solar. And so I'm getting my export rate of 12p there during the day and I'm charging at 7.5p in the night so even after losses I'm making some profit there but I'm not forced discharging because currently I'm on a Scottish power one and you're not allowed to do brown exports so I'm following the rules here obviously if you're on something like an octopus export you can do that um, and therefore you can force export instead and so if you change the toggle between the two um, so if I go down to here and I've got discharge freeze only if I turn this off and then it will actually recalculate. It's going to take a little while because I've got an awful lot of discharge slots here and it will come up with some new plan based on the fact that it's now allowed to force export. Um, this is actually going to change things live and it might not be what I want but we'll see how it comes up for the, the video. Obviously these data predictions have got the same things here again. So remember I talked about best and best 10. So here it um, here PV and PV10 are the soul cast predictions. How much solar you're going to generate in the two scenarios. And then obviously you you can see the amount of import and export predicted in the best scenario. And also the base scenario. You can obviously add to the chart um, the different ones uh, as you like. So you can see here now I've changed it. Now it's got a force export slot just before bedtime. This makes sense because it's still high. The export rate's fixed for me. So you might as well discharge the latest possible time and actually empty what's remaining in the battery up to whatever your margin is. And I've got the margin set to about 1.9 kilowatt hours so it won't discharge below that. And that's mainly just to keep a little bit of a buffer in, but you can tune that. Um, with the settings here as, as well so there is a, um, a minimum setting um, let me see if I can find it Min. so we've got best SOC keep so I'm keeping two kilowatt hours so yeah it's about that so I'm going to just put my toggle back because I don't actually want it to to do that so in answer to a lot of questions, it's not hardwired for a particular tariff. It takes whatever tariff you've got, which you've either mounted manually or connected through the Octopus um, plugin, uh, and then it will actually try all different combinations as possible to actually try and find the cheapest option for you based on some of the things that you can tune. Obviously, your inverter losses and battery charging losses have an impact, so they'll change the simulation results. Obviously, if you set it to keep a certain amount of battery level, that'll have a result. Um, and um, and obviously, whether you enable the setting discharge or not, or whether you've got the freeze mode on. And then there's also this split here. So in my case, discharge slot split 30, essentially, and I've got 
combined discharge slots off which means it does this split so I split it into 30 minute chunks for discharge window if I didn't split it up I'd just have one that was 24 hours long and I wouldn't be able to use it anyway so I need to split it but obviously if you've got a variable rate then you don't need to because it will get split automatically as the rate changes whereas for charge slots I've got combined charge slots set which means I get one charge slot overnight if I turn that off then my charge slot will get split into multiple portions based on how I've set this to which is half an hour so I could turn that off and then I'm going to get a slightly different charging plan when I do that which is interesting because then it would allow exporting during the time that I'm charging because obviously the export price could be higher than the charge price and you might get some curious results there then obviously you need to look at what it's doing on the on the chart and what the plan is but remember this updates every five minutes so this is the plan now but it doesn't mean it's definitely going to happen things may change you may consume more energy or less energy throughout the day your solar might turn out to be differently um, obviously you might change the options the predictions may be slightly incorrect my modeling of the way the battery performs might not be exactly right and so it might charge faster or slower than anticipated so things will change and the plan will change and you can obviously you know see what's been happening because it's recorded in the status register um, and you also get notifications as well so if i search for the uh, status here you can see i'm currently freeze discharging that means my battery won't charge and i'm exporting my excess and if I look at this, I can see the history of everything that's happened. Um, and so it gives you the log of when things change over time. Obviously, you've got notifications turned on. You're going to get notifications through the notify in Home Assistant, which might be to your phone or might not be. It depends on how you set it up. Um, so look, now this charge slot's gotten changed. And it's done something rather curious now where it's charged a bit here and then it set the charge level up matching the um, uh, as it goes up it's actually really the same thing the outcomes the same it's just done a slightly different profile for the for the charging but if I was to enable force discharge we might actually get some of those inside that charging window and it might start to alternate I don't really want that um, it's not suitable for my tariff but obviously if it is for you you can give it a try as well so the other things to mention is obviously the more accurate the plan, the better. So making sure you've got your car charging data subtracted from it. Obviously, if you're an Octopus Intelligent, it will read your car charging plan directly from Intelligent. And so it'll know when you plan to charge and what extra slots you might get at low rate. If you're on other tariffs, you can actually plan the car charging directly with PredBack yourself. You set a ready time. You can set the char charging plan smart enabled. But you need to obviously set up sensors to find out what your current car's charge level is at um, and what the target is in some way so that it knows and then it will allocate slots for the car and they'll end up um, there in the, in the charging slot register and then from the, um, from the charging slot registers for the car which is a car charging slot. I don't have any because I don't have my car plugged in. They'll appear here and this will turn on and off. You can connect this sensor directly to your automation that starts and stops your car charging and you can have something very like Octopus Intelligent but on a different tariff, let's say Agile for example because Octopus didn't automate Agile to allow you to charge on the cheapest slot so this can do it for you provided you can control your car um, or the charger yourself um, so that's another important one you also get some information about what's going on here about when the next charge time is going to be and the charge limit and when the next discharge is going to be and what the charge limit is there um, so that's also useful um, and you can also get information about the next low rate and high rate slots if you want to use that for other automations um, and there's also some triggers you can set up for when you have excess power so that you can trigger other things like start the washing machine etc so there's an awful lot you can do with it um, unfortunately it does make it quite complicated so you have to be a little bit brave and learn how to use the different features uh, if you want to do things um, 
hopefully that um, concludes the video now and answers uh, a few of the questions. Um, but just to summarise, um, Prebat op um, optimises based on cost. It does it by tuning all the possible charge and all the possible discharge slots and finding out which combination is the cheapest um, according to an algorithm it uses. So it's not tariff specific. Um, hopefully that helps. Thanks then.